With me on Hogs Vlog, I've got Sanjay Bangar, now ex-Indian opening batter and also ex-Indian batting coach, and hopefully we see him back there uh, sooner than later because he does a fantastic job. But I want to go back firstly to 2002 before we get into uh, what I want to talk about with Pajara right now, Sanjay. Um, you had a wonderful partnership there at Headingley 2002. You won the test match by an innings and 46 runs, if I can recall. But you had a 170-run partnership with Rahul Dravid. Now, going back there and uh, moving from India to England, what adjustments did you have to make to your batting to uh, to those swinging and extra bouncy conditions over there in England? Well, uh Okay, what happens is that uh, at Headingley or uh, in conditions which are seeming and uh, swinging, uh, the less shots you have, the better it is. And I never had too many shots in my book, so that worked to my advantage. Wherein you know, I I sort of was very restricted or very limited in my range of scoring or the range of shots that that I had, and it worked to my advantage because uh, you know I was playing close to my body, I was leaving a lot of balls. And, uh, you know, uh, and we had some experience also, like uh, when when we play in Mumbai, I, I'm, I'm from Mumbai and we play a lot of uh, a tournament during rainy season and that is called the Kanga League, uh, wherein you play on wet or dampish wickets and you get some experience of how to handle those conditions where there's a lot of moisture underneath and uh, it gives you a fair idea as to what shots to play and what shots not to play. So I think it all came together and because of that, we, me and Rahul were able to get together a partnership which uh, actually helped India going forward in the Test match. Right, with uh, some of the selections that uh, India have taken over there this year, there's um, some, some uh, selections that we haven't heard of. Do they look at those particular conditions and see how opening batsmen uh, play in those conditions with those future selections down the track? Well, uh, I think uh, it was a bit of a chance uh, for uh, KL Rahul that he got a nod in in the first place because all along Rohit Sharma has been nurtured uh, as an opening batsman uh, since the last two years because he played a lot of... uh, uh, home test matches in India and that's a great place to begin for any test opener wherein uh, you do get your performances under your belt and then it helps you going uh, with a lot of confidence when you go for those overseas test matches. So, uh, Rohit Sharma was obviously one guy who was all, already slated to open but then certain things happened and then uh, uh, Mayank Agarwal getting hit on the head, uh, a couple of other openers also not in frame, maybe a Prithvi Shaw. Uh, having reached there but unable to play because of the quarantine uh, stuff. So, KL Rahul being a slated middle order batsman before the tour because he had done so much opening for India in the previous test matches because uh, he's had a wonderful record as an opener right from 2014, uh, the the 100 that he got in Sydney and then he gone on to do a lot of uh, run scoring all across the world actually, West Indies or Sri Lanka or uh, South Africa was a place wherein he didn't score runs, but uh, I don't think that the conditions determine the choice of the openers as such. But uh, it was basically what was available and who the personnel were, and both of them were very, very well adept at doing that particular role. Yeah, and I think they've done a fantastic job, and I'm quite surprised that the Indian openers have way outplayed uh, the English openers over there. I think it's 275 runs. Uh, before this third test match to 61 runs. Uh, so uh, you're outscoring uh, England in the most precious moment. That's getting the team off to a good start. You're setting the game up for your for your team. Now, I just want to quickly go back to that 170 partnership. Rahul Dravid, his record over in England far outweighs uh, most other Indian batsmen. 600s, 450s, uh, an average of 68. Now, what sets him apart from uh, the other Indian batsmen with the way that he adapts in those conditions? I believe that uh, he is somebody who works very hard at his game and and that's the case with most international batsmen because they all pride in what they do. But as far as Rahul is concerned, uh, what works in his favour is that uh, the the solid game and the solid technique that he has uh, in place uh, wherein it helped him uh, ride over those tough challenging situations early on 
and uh, patience is his virtue i mean patience has been uh, his uh, his biggest strength uh, having batted at various situations and knowing and understanding situation so uh, and one thing that he did uh, a bit differently than other indian batsmen when he approached uh, english conditions and uh, that's my observation i do not know whether rahul did it on purpose but uh, uh, rahul is somebody who sort of uh, made that back and back movement in english conditions and most indian batsmen when they go overseas they do that back and across uh, movement now you look at a lot of english batsmen who have been successful in english conditions they've sort of stayed beside the line of the ball a bit you you think of a graham gooch or you think of uh, uh, to an extent uh, alistair cook or you think of uh, even joe root they they don't really want to get behind the line of the ball and that's that's the reason that uh, a lot of run scoring happens in england square of the wicket on the off side wherein okay you defend the straight lines but you go with the swing and that's what rahul did fantastically well in that innings because i was looking at the highlights uh, once you invited me on the show as to you know just recall the kind of shots that rahul played and uh, if you if you saw uh, the shots that rahul played earlier earlier on in his innings and then later sachin tendulkar also played there were a lot of cover drives uh, that were played there were a lot of back foot punches through cover point region or there was those occasional cut shots and when saurav ganguly also came in he scored a lot of runs square of the wicket wherein he went with the swing so i believe that uh, that is one thing that uh, uh, helped rahul quite a bit as to how he let the ball do its movement in the air or off the seam and then uh, played it very late which it allowed him to score a lot of runs square of the wicket on the off side i want to just quickly talk to you about pajara and this is the uh, the main reason why i i've got you on um sanjay pajara last game didn't make too many runs but he batted time how important is it for someone like that out number 3 to bat time in this indian lineup there's a lot of talk about suri kumar yadav might be coming in with a more aggressive uh stance but I still think Pajara is your most important batsman in this lineup without a doubt and you think of all the major triumphs that uh, we've had as an indian team overseas and uh, we go back maybe 6 7 years or so uh, and I'll take it uh, right from the beginning it was probably in 2016 uh, he was out of the team and there was a vacancy at the top of the order and he had to open that uh, test match and he got a 100 and that was on a challenging sri lankan wicket it, uh, and by sri lankan wicket uh, you you rather expect that it would be turning and uh, jumping around but it was seeming proper seeming track uh, uh, in colombo so he scored a 100 in that test match then you come to the test uh, the last test series uh, in played in england he was again uh, outstanding he probably scored 300 plus runs uh, in a series where not many uh, batsmen were able to cross 200 only three batsmen from either side that was Alistair Cook Virat Kohli and uh, Cheteshwar Pujara who uh, did those uh, did score those runs for their teams and then you think of the 2018 uh, India 1819 India Australia series uh, wherein he scored 300 uh, in a four test match series and literally tired the opposition out and you think of uh, if you ask uh, a pat cummins or if you ask uh, a nathan lyon as to whom they would hate being there uh, on the center wicket batting against them and they would probably vouch for pujara they they don't want to see the face of pujara because uh, if he if he stays then he's going to stay there forever that's uh, that's the kind of form and the grit that he displayed now you go back to the 2020 2021 test triumph in australia uh the bounce back happened in melbourne but uh, the the, uh, the back to the wall safeguard thing that happened in sydney and uh, the brisbane uh, uh, chase on day 5 wherein he literally had to take a lot of blows on his body so uh, i have a feeling that uh, pujara's contributions uh, uh, whether they are taken positively or negatively always hinges upon the outcome of the result uh but but his value to the team is immense and he's invaluable as said to the team well you, you brought up a good point there five test match series here in england and they've got two bowlers broad missed the last test match because of injury but you've got uh, broad and anderson that uh, are pretty long under the tooth now for indians over there that's uh they're old age just like me um 
how important is it for him to do what he did and just keep wearing those old bowlers down? Because that wear and tear uh, pays dividends in that back end, doesn't it? Uh, I think for a player of uh, of his style, that okay, uh, we all know that uh, uh, what sort of a game plan he has, and his main priority is to tire bowlers out, and in that process. Uh, I also want to bring back that Johannesburg test match where it was played on a brute of a wicket uh, and India managed to win that test match and he had not scored a single run till the time he had played 50 balls and he was literally clapped uh, when he scored that first run on his 51st delivery that he faced. But after that, uh, uh, he got a half century and that uh, half century and the runs that Virat and uh, got in the first innings and Ajinkya in the second innings actually helped uh, us win that test match uh, which was one of the one of the best test match that you would be part of so uh, for somebody like a pujara if there's acceptance for what he does from the change room then it it takes a huge pressure off uh, his shoulder because he knows that okay uh, i can start slow my strike rate can be a bit uh, slower maybe it's at certain times uh, the non striker might uh, uh, have to play uh, have, might have to have a long periods of inactivity but if if the team is okay with it then it gives a great uh, uh, great sort of a comfort to that particular batsman that okay i am doing a job for the team and the team appreciates it and in the long run or in the in the in the context of the game it is going to be beneficial to the team uh, then it is easier for a player of his caliber and his style to do a job for his team. Well, he's my favourite test player uh, by far. I just love the, uh, the the old style of test cricket. So it's great to see him still uh, in that Indian lineup. Do you reckon he's got a place in IPL cricket? You're over there in Dubai quickly before you go. You're over there in Dubai ready for the IPL. Do you think Pajara can play a role as a batsman in IPL cricket? Well, uh, to to to. To take you back to 2014, I had picked him uh, in the Kings Eleven Punjab team, and he was he actually played six seven games as an opener. So <laughs> I had showed uh, showed the faith uh, in Pujara at that time. Uh, but at the moment, he is with CSK. So you would rather ask this question to Flem, not me. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we go, because um, I've got a lot of Indian uh, fans out there or uh, in the audience, one tip, you being the Indian batting coach or the ex-Indian batting coach, one tip that you can give a young player to focus on who wants to make it playing test cricket for India? If it's an England series and at most times as a batsman you'll always be uh, judged by what you do away from India. Uh, but uh, I think one thing is that if you can keep your hands in the pocket all the time, hands in the pocket theory works really well for batsmen. That By that what I mean is that uh, if batsmen can, uh, can play close to the body, uh, keep your hands really close to the body, make the contact point right under his eye or probably close to your front pad then you literally set yourself up uh, uh, for for a long innings because uh, there are no freebies uh, you'll have to grind it out but uh, this technique helps a lot of players uh, survive those initial testing periods and then uh, tire the bowlers out and uh, pick the runs when the loose ball comes. And that can work out for 2020 cricket when you get on a dodgy wicket as well because you've got to get the, uh, the skills to work the ones and twos to put the pressure back on the bowler when it is seeming because we do see pitches like that in T20 cricket. That is fantastic advice, Sanjay. Thank you very much for uh, joining me on Hogs Vlog and doing this interview. And we're both Kolkata Knight Rider ex-players as well, aren't we? Yeah, yeah of course. We've, we've uh, crossed... Uh, uh, roads a number of times we've done uh, commentary work together for for Crick Info and uh, here we are doing the blogs as well yep no thank you very much for joining me mate you're an absolute legend and uh, you've done a great job service to cricket uh, so far and you've got a lot more advice and uh, good experience to give to the younger players coming through and no wonder why India are do doing so well with the bat is because of your uh, legacy that uh, you had there while you are batting coach for India. So well done to the job that you've done, Sanjay. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, Hank. Thank you, Hoggy. Enjoyed it. Thank you so much.